Joshua's Farewell In our last story, we learned of Israel battling against five allied armies. God sent hail from the sky and caused the sun to stand still until Israel prevailed over their foe. In this story, we learn about Israel transitioning into a brief era of peace and victory. Joshua calls for the people of Israel to stay steadfast and obey God before departing to be with his Lord, as inspired by the book of Joshua. Hello, I'm Pastor Jack Graham with today's episode of The Bible in a Year. In our last episode, we learned how God stopped time to give Joshua and his army a miraculous victory over five kings and their armies all at once. Joshua's immense, incredible faith in God and boldness to make requests to God became an example for all the people and for us generations later. In today's story, we'll hear of a time of peace and more victories for God's people as Joshua leads them with courage. Finally, we'll hear this great leader's parting words for his people as he prepares to join those who went before him in the presence of his God. Let's listen now to today's reading. Blood and struggle. This had marked Israel's past few years under Joshua. Though the battles were difficult, they watched the faithfulness of God unfold time and time again before them. Israel's land increased each week, and it was time for the land to be divided and given to the twelve tribes of Israel. Luckily, Moses had guided Joshua and the elders how to divide up the land before he had died. So they began to allocate plots of land as instructed. Caleb, a humble servant and soldier that was one of the twelve spies under Moses, came to Joshua with a request. I was forty years old when you and I first saw the promised land as spies, Caleb said. Like you, I did not waver or compromise. I knew from the very beginning that God would give us the land and the Lord has blessed me enough to live another forty-five years, so I may enter into it with my family. Moses once promised me that all the land I explored would be mine, and I have waited long to inherit it. If you would give me the land promised to me, I will fight to the very end to defend it. Caleb, though eighty-five years of age, stood tall and strong. Joshua looked at his dearest and closest friend, and blessed him. The two of them had seen an entire generation pass away before getting to enter into the promised land. They had endured hunger, war, and struggle together. Giving Caleb the land brought joy to his soul. Caleb gathered a small army to go and conquer the land that was promised to him. His armor was old and stained with years of war, but the heart it protected was filled with new life and hope. Caleb offered his daughter's hand in marriage to whoever would help him conquer the nearby city. One man rose to the occasion, and he and his wife were given the nearby springs. Caleb's family was blessed for hundreds of generations afterwards. The armies of Israel swept through the land of Canaan and seized what had been promised to them. Every tribe went into their land and dwelled there with their family. God worked with and through his people and their dreams for almost a hundred years in the wilderness had been realized. Years had passed, and Israel's blades began to collect dust in their homes. Peace came upon Israel, like the slow and rising tide. Joshua was old, and years of battle had worn his body. His heart, mind, and soul were preparing to depart from the earth. Joshua gathered all the people of Israel by his side, as Moses did before him, Joshua had a few last commands for the people. Joshua's voice was deep and raspy, as if it were calloused from years of yelling and battle. Moses spoke to the people like a shepherd did to his sheep, but Joshua spoke to them as a general did to his beloved soldiers. He raised his voice and said, You have all seen what God has done for your sake. You have land for your children to live and thrive. It stretches from sea to sea. God will not forsake you, and he will continue to bring your enemies to their knees before you. Be strong, and do not waver from keeping God's commands close to your hearts. Joshua choked up as he spoke, remembering the tender love and care God had shown them. 
God was truly their conquering king, and it was an honor to serve him. Joshua continued speaking to the people, saying, Cling to the Lord, for our victory, our land, and our lives are nothing without him. One man and God is enough to destroy an army of thousands. Remember this, and be careful not to stray. Joshua recounted the great and mighty things God had done for Israel, for his greatest fear was they would forget how faithful God was to them. Without Joshua to remind them, would they truly be steadfast? Would they remain a people that clung to their God as Jacob once did? Time would tell, and Joshua would not be there to find out. He looked at the sea of faces listening to him. The children of God, what a fickle, flawed, and faithless people they were. Yet God loved them. He fought for them and provided for them. Joshua smiled, feeling the same selfless love towards them. Joshua spoke loud and clear for all to hear. There will be many other things that desire your worship. Evil will lurk at your doorstep, so choose. Choose this day whom you will serve. Serve the gods of the Amorites or the gods of Egypt. But as for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. A roar of applause followed Joshua's words. The people answered Joshua, saying, It is God who has delivered us time and time again. We will serve the Lord, for He is our God. Joshua shook his head, smiling. He knew they would not. He knew that even now some of them kept idols in their tents. Some of them lived in adultery, greed, and secrecy. You are not able to, Joshua said tears falling from his eyes. The people denied it, telling him that they would be faithful. So Joshua had them renew their covenant with the Lord, and they laid a stone in the sanctuary of God as a reminder. Joshua departed from the earth at 110 years old. Joshua's unwavering warrior spirit led Israel into many victories. Cities trembled at the name of Joshua, and entire kingdoms raised their hands in surrender when we came. Yet Joshua's greatest triumph was his devotion to God and his unrelenting desire to serve his people. The people of Israel would start well and remain faithful to God, but as Joshua's memory faded, so would their devotion. Yet Joshua was never the hero of their story, nor was Moses or Joseph. It was God that was their steadfast and loyal hero. And it would be God who would appoint deliverers to snatch Israel from the jaws of destruction time and time again. As Joshua breathed his last breath, the era of the judges began. So we begin today's reading with more battles and more victories. And with every victory, God's glory increased among the people, and so did the territory that they possessed. They had now amassed so much land that they could begin to portion it out according to how Moses had instructed them before he died. It's yet another step towards the fulfillment of God's promise to his people. It all began with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and extended hundreds of years into the future, into the life of Moses, and now through Joshua. If there's ever any doubt, if God makes good on his promises, you need only to look at the story of his people Israel and the faithfulness of God, what God showed them more and more over hundreds and hundreds of years. Today's reading brought us back to Caleb. Love the story of Caleb, the other spy who sided with Joshua so many years before. God had allowed him to live and enter the promised land as well, and now Caleb went to Joshua to ask for the land that Moses had promised him. So Joshua blessed Caleb's request, and now an old man, he went into battle one more time to conquer his territory. He said, God, give me this mountain. And God gave him a victory, and he settled with his family, taking hold of the promise of God. What followed in the life of Israel was a time of relative peace. Each tribe began to settle in and to develop their own land and their own lifestyle. Years passed, and Joshua is now an older man. His body is weakened by time, but his faith and his spirit are as strong as ever. And though he knows his last days are upon him, just as Moses did, Joshua gathers the people. 
His charge echoes both Moses' words to the people and Moses' words to Joshua. Be strong. Be faithful. Joshua 23, 6-8 records these powerful instructions. Therefore, be very strong to keep and to do all that is written in the book of the law of Moses, turning aside from it neither to the right hand nor to the left, that you may not mix with these nations remaining among you, or make mention of the names of their gods, or swear by them, or serve them, or bow down to them. But you shall cling to the Lord your God just as you have done to this day. Joshua had served God and the people with faith, courage, and strength. But he also knew in all humility that the victories were not his own, but they belonged to the Lord. Always the battle belongs to the Lord, and so does the praise. And if the people were to experience continued peace, they must stick to the laws of God, the Ten Commandments, and the promises, the covenant that God had made with them. This, of course, would not be easy, as we'll see in future episodes. Ultimately, the people would fail and fall, showing that the only true solution would be God himself, and God is able to make things right when we do the wrong thing. We're going to see that in coming episodes. So let's pray together. Dear God, thank you for the example of Joshua, of his strength, his courage, his faith, and his faithfulness. Lord, may we also keep our eyes on you not turning to the things of this world or the gods of this age, but live in the hope and the assurance and the promise that what you have given to us is ours to possess in Jesus Christ. May we always look to you in humility and believe the best is yet to come. Thank you for listening today to the Bible in a Year podcast. I'm Jack Graham from Dallas, Texas, pastor of Prestonwood Baptist Church. Download the Pray.com app and make prayer a priority in your life. And if you enjoy this podcast, share it with others, people that you love and care about, people who want to know the Bible, help them understand the Bible as well. This podcast can make a huge difference in someone's life. If you want more resources on how to tap into the power of Jesus Christ in your life, then be sure to visit jackgraham.org. This episode is sponsored by MediShare, an innovative healthcare solution for Christians to save money without sacrificing quality.